Welcome to another Geography Juice Leeds Local History video, this time looking at Bridge End in the centre of Leeds. This is Leeds Bridge, built between 1870 and 1873 by William Henry Barlow. It was designed by T. Dine Steel and includes ironwork from John Butler of Stanningley. It is relatively peaceful here now, but for a long time it was the busiest bridge in the city. Bridge End is the name of the road that runs over the bridge and the small but really interesting collection of buildings on either side of it. This video tells the story of Bridge End and its buildings. In Leeds you might occasionally hear someone say get round your own end, meaning leave here and go to where you live. Perhaps that is how Bridge End got its name, in other words, the place or end where the bridge is. Probably more likely, it is due to the proximity of the bridge to Brigit, for a long time the most important road in the city. The hedgerow gained its name because it was the road that crossed at the top end of Brigit, hence it was the hedgerow. Similarly, Bridge End is located at the bridge end of Brigit. Whatever the root of its name, Bridge End is located in the centre of Leeds, at the southern terminus of Brigit, and crosses the River Eyre to the southern edge of Leeds city centre. The current Leeds Bridge has stood here for 150 years, but before that there was a much earlier bridge, a medieval bridge built of stone. As the city grew and the bridge became busier, it was widened, first in 1730 and then in 1760, but as the Victorian period progressed, it was clear that a new bridge was needed. This photograph was taken in 1869, just before the 14th century bridge was demolished. The view is taken from the south looking north, over the bridge towards Brigit. Widening and replacing the bridge was a massive undertaking that took three years to complete. Eventually, all of the bridge end buildings that you can see in this view would be demolished, with just one notable exception, the building nearest to the river on the right, number 17 Bridge End. 17 Bridge End, the white building seen here, was originally a house, built in the mid-1700s. It was altered and extended during the Victorian period, and along with number 19, it is now a Grade 2 listed building. For many years it was occupied by Hick brothers, who were ironmongers and turners. The shop was known for a large kettle hanging over the door. This photo was taken in 1932. Included in the listing are the original shop windows, which remain to this day. In addition to the building's long association with Leeds Bridge, it also has two other claims to fame. Firstly, it was in this house in 1847 that the idea of a temperance organisation for children was first put forward. Jabez Tunnicliffe, a minister and very successful advocate of the temperance cause, founded the Band of Hope in Leeds later that year. Within 50 years it numbered 3.5 million children and adults and had Queen Victoria as its patron. Secondly, Louis Le Prince filmed some of the world's first ever moving pictures from the building. The film was shot sometime in late 1888 and features Leeds Bridge. While 17 and 19 Bridge End managed to avoid demolition, the buildings alongside them weren't so fortunate and they were eventually pulled down. Numbers 21 to 29 can be seen in this undated photo from around 1900. Most of the properties were boarded up and the sides are being used for advertising posters. By 1906, these buildings had been replaced by the impressive offices of the Air and Calder Navigation on the corner of Bridge End and Dock Street. Later, 
it became the British Waterways offices prior to closure. It is now a combination of offices on the ground floor and apartments above. As the 20th century commenced, on the northern junction of Bridge End, changes were also taking place. The buildings on the left of this photograph, although rather impressive, were pulled down. To the left of this shot is Bridge End. Swinegate runs on ahead. To the right, over the shoulder of the photographer, is Brigitte. The Leeds Tramways offices were built at this location and completed by 1915. This building was designed by George Bowman and was used as the regional transport headquarters until privatisation of the public transport system. In 1999, the building was converted to the Malmaison Hotel, keeping the exterior relatively unchanged. At the back of the buildings, which were replaced by the tramway offices, the King's Mill Goit used to run on its way to Warehouse Hill. You will notice on this map that the watercourse passed under Bridge End and the buildings to the right of the road. You can see the bridge over the Goit on Bridge End in this photo from 1904. A Goit is a channel of water used to power mills. There is a small removal contractor's office squeezed in alongside it, and to the side of that is Tenter Lane. Tenter Lane used to run between the small office and a large building on the far left that was numbered 10 to 18 Bridge End and which abutted the bridge and river. Today the gap where Tenter Lane ran has been filled in with building extensions. 10 to 18 is in fact now known as One Sovereign Keys and has recently undergone further transformations to extend it. Some of the original brickwork has been retained as part of the development, but the original roof has gone, replaced by further stories, and the inside appears to retain few original features. On the other side of the road, the Bridge Inn takes the ground floor of 1 to 5 Bridge End, although the pub is a recent addition from the 1980s. For much of their life, 1, 3, 5 and 7 have been four separate premises, in a building constructed in the late Victorian period. It replaced a collection of larger buildings on the site that were demolished as the wider road alignment to Brigitte from the new bridge was created. Surprisingly, the Bridge Inn is located on the site of a Chantry Chapel, the Chantry Chapel of St Mary the Virgin, dating from the 14th century. In later years it became a school and then a warehouse before it was demolished in 1760. Chapels were occasionally built on bridges to be available for the spiritual need of travellers who would give thanks for a safe arrival in a town after a long and difficult journey. During the Middle Ages, bridge chapels were not uncommon, but few of them have survived, though examples still exist in Wakefield, Rotherham and Derby. The King's Mill Goit used to pass under this building, though I could find no evidence of this on either side. To the rear of the building, and leading down to the river, is the interestingly named Pitfall Street. Further along Bridge End, nearer to the river, are numbers 9 to 15. Once again this was originally four separate properties in the same building, built in the late 1800s. Today the building is home to Viva Pizzeria, the Black Heart Air Salon and the River S Cafe Bar, but in the past Leeds directories show the building has been home to quite a number of shops and services including bedding dealers, dentists, opticians, tobacconists and bootmakers. In 1897, number 9 was in fact the Butcher's Inn. Alongside Leeds Bridge on the southern side of the river is the building which comprises numbers 20 and 22. The ground floor is currently the home of Wine & Co solicitors. 
The building has several floors and there is a striking clock tower adorning the corner nearest the bridge. At the turn of the 20th century, this was the home of Tully's piano dealers, who were well known in the city. Piano fortes were very popular in people's homes at that time. There are several building extensions to the rear, which would have provided space for offices and storage of pianos and accessories. Angus and Co., who were belting manufacturers, took over the premises just before the Second World War. You can see how the building has developed over time when you look from this direction. It isn't clear if all of the building is currently in use, though some of it looks like it needs further TLC. Joining on to 22 and rounding the corner is the building which is numbered 24 to 28. This lovely ornate red brick building has housed home furnishers, metal spinners and grocers over the years. Today the ground floor is home to the offices of Martin & Co and the upstairs is apartments called Bridge End Lofts. Although 24 to 28 and 30 to 32 were built separately, more recently the apartment development seems to have joined them together internally. The ground floor of 30 to 32 was more recently known as Sid's Bar and a makeshift beer garden was to be found at the rear on the old coal wharf. At the time of filming the ground floor premises were vacant and available to rent as a bar or restaurant. For many years number 30 was a post office whilst 32 has existed as refreshment rooms and a restaurant in the past. The building most under threat on Bridge End is number 36 to 44. You will note there has never been a number 34 Bridge End, at least since the new Leeds Bridge was built and the older buildings were removed. The ground floor at the front of the building is currently in use as takeaway outlets, a taxi company and a news agents. However, the upper floors are in a poor state of repairs, with some patching up taking place recently but with considerable work needed to bring the building back into full use. At the rear of the building it is clear that it will take a great deal of money and effort to stabilise and conserve this Victorian building. Unfortunately, like the majority of buildings at Bridge End, the building is not listed. However, it does feature on the Leeds Civic Trust's Heritage at Risk register and hopefully their interest will lead to greater care being offered to the building in future. Bridge End is a wonderfully interesting collection of buildings that have sprung up around one of the major reasons for the location and growth of Leeds, Leeds Bridge. As the centre of the city spreads south across the river, this area is set to gain increasing interest and footfall. It is delightful that so many older buildings in this area have remained and continue to link to the heritage of the city. If you have enjoyed this video, please take a look at the others in the Geography Juice Leeds Local History Collection. Do add your comments below. Thank you for watching.